been dealing with me for probably the past eight weeks. So I pray that you get something out of this. I pray that it's something that touches your heart. And I pray it's something that you can bring back to those of your battle buddies, your family members, and those that you love. And so I want to open up in prayer, and then we're going to get into the word. And so let us pray. Holy God, we thank you this morning that you woke us up, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals and the God who restores. And so, Lord, this morning we thank you that you are going to use your word to both heal and restore us back to you, but also our relationships. And we thank you, Father, that this is an opportunity to be in your presence, to encounter the living God that is Jesus the Christ, our Messiah, our King, our Lord, and our Savior. And so we ask that this word would fall on good ground, that it would produce great fruit, that it would be fruitful, that it would multiply, and that you would be glorified. We ask all these things in Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. 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 I'm excited, you guys. I'm excited because the Lord has been healing me this week. I'm excited because he wants to also heal you this morning. And so, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Mary J. Blige. She's one of my uh, favorite singers when I was in middle school and in high school. And one of the, the lines out of one of the songs that she sang says, who you loving, who you want to be hugging. What does that have to do with the word, Calvin Piper? Hold on. I'll get to it. Next slide. So we're going to get into the scriptures for today. The first one's going to be out of 1 John chapter 4, 9 through 21. So I'm going to read that for you. And it says, we love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So I want to stop there for a moment before we go on to the next, the next uh, verse. In 1 John 4, it sets up the condition of the second most important commandment. So the first commandment that Jesus says is the most important is to love thy God with all thy heart with all thy mind and with all their soul he is a jealous God he wants you to love him first but then he wants to show you the type of relationship that he wants you to have with your brother your brother your sister your neighbor and that's what first John 4 is talking about that if you say you love God but you do not love your brother then you are a liar and so when we were younger, a lot of us said we told white lies or we told half lies or half truths. But God says a specific lie is the opposite of truth, period. Bottom line. So you either are doing what God has called you to do or you're doing the opposite. And in 1 John, it's talking about we love because he first loved us first. None of us chose to love God. God chose us first, and then he draws us closer and nearer to him. And so in order to love our brother, in order to love our neighbor, we first have to first understand what it means to love God. And so I want to tell you that word in verse 19, love, means agape. It means a type of love that comes from God, from heaven. Not the relational love back and forth between our, our, our brother and our sister, or even necessarily our spouses. But it's a love that comes from God. It's agape love. So the next verse, you can go to the next verse, sir, is Corinthians 13. This is something that most of us have seen or heard at least once in our lifetime. 1 Corinthians 13 is used at weddings. It's used at uh, events to tell people how you're supposed to love. And sometimes they use it to tell your spouse during marriage counseling, this is how you're supposed to love your spouse. But this word, love, that goes throughout 1 Corinthians is also the word agape. And this word is extremely important for us today because this is going to set up the conditions, the standard of how to love everyone. Not just your brother, your sister, not just your parents, not just your spouse, but how to love. And sometimes when we look at 1 Corinthians, it's, it's like, God, how, how can we do all that? You want me to do all those things all the time, consistently with all the people that I meet? 
Let's read it first. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 through 7 says, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. That sounds like a tall order in order to love. And that word continues over love, love, love. And maybe we don't always use it as often as maybe we want to with our, 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 our people that we love. But it's a word that God is. God is love. And we may have heard that before. We may have used even that phrase before. But this morning, I want you to connect these texts because that's what I want to help you do today. In order to love God, love our brother, this is the standard of how to love. So as you're in training, right, you're meeting people that you've never met before, you're creating relationships, you're creating bonds, and even when you leave Fort Moore, these are going to be some people that you are extremely close with, people that you're going to tell your secrets to, you're going to tell those life events to, you're going to tell some of the ups and the downs, the storms, the things that nobody else you can tell to, your battle buddies, some that are sitting to the left and right of you, they're the ones that are going to hear these stories. And so this is a time while you're here at Fort Moore that God wants to teach you how to create healthy relationships. One where you love without being irritable. When you're tired and you're hungry and you're about to jump out of plane, when you're about to take a test that is pivotal to your graduation, when you are tired of the things that are happening to you and you're ready to do things for yourself in your life, not to be irritable, not to turn against your brother, how to love your sister. But see, what I love about 1 Corinthians, it says, love rejoices with truth. And so when we saw in 1 John 4, it talks about the opposite, right? Liars, people that hate. So we want to be people of truth. How do we do that, Chaplain Piper? We must know God. And the last song that our worship team sang, it says we want to know God more. As you go deeper in your relationship with God and you know God more, he reveals things to us. It's an intimate relationship between you and God. So as you get closer to God, the beautiful thing is your relationships get closer. They grow to a healthier, mature place. So a lot of times we may say, oh, I want that other person to mature. I want that other person to figure out how to be a better friend or a better person or a better spouse or a better boss or a better commander. I want them to learn how to do these things and then I'll do my part. But see, the word of God says something different. The word of God is intent on you. It's between you and God. And so as you learn to love God more, as you learn to know God more, your relationships are going to become better, healthier, beneficial to both sides. So, okay, Chaplain Piper, I've got one more scripture for you guys, so you can go to the next one. Now, this one, I want to do it, and I'm going to read it pretty quick for you because I want you to, to understand it. Have you guys heard of the Lord's Prayer before? Have you recited the Lord's Prayer before? So this is right after the Lord's Prayer. And a lot of times we don't read this one. Sometimes we gloss over it. But where I was raised in church, we made sure to say this every single Sunday after we said the Lord's Prayer. And it reads in Matthew 6, verse 14 through 15, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And so I think we gloss over this, or maybe we skip over this. So why is this important for this morning, Chaplain Piper? So there's a connection between love, forgiveness, and healthy relationships that I want to paint for you today. And so as I have been going through this process myself the last eight weeks, God has been saying, how can you say you love me if you're not going to forgive your brother? I'm like, well, I said I forgive out of my mouth, but in my heart, I hadn't actually forgiven. And usually you can tell if you've actually forgiven someone by the way that you respond to them or by the way that they respond to you and what your next response is. So I'm gonna paint a picture for you for just a moment. 
because I want to connect 1 John to 1 Corinthians to Matthew for us. So loving God is the ultimate, right? Jesus Christ died on the cross for every single person in this room. Did he just die for us? No, 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 no. He died for those who are going to accept him and for those who are going to deny him. He died for the entire world from the beginning to the end until Jesus comes back. So whether they're sitting in this church today, he has died for them too. So that's the premise that I want you to think about this morning. God died for all. Jesus died on the cross for all. We just happen to be here this morning to hear this specific message. So now imagine that you are in a crisis, right? You're in a crisis and there is your battle buddy that's there that has not the right words to say to you. Because I've been reading the book of Job and I've been learning some things. And your battle buddy doesn't know exactly what to say because they've never encountered this specific, this specific thing anymore uh, before. They never had this predicament happen to them. So they don't know exactly what to say to you. I think sometimes when we're in crisis, when we are in hard times, we expect other people to kind of give us some answers or at least to help us along the way. God sometimes allows those things to happen so that we would draw closer to him instead of relying on those that are around us. What happens when you are in crisis and you need something or someone? A lot of times we'll go to those that are right next to us. A lot of times we'll go to the people that are closest to us. But God is teaching us in his word that he should be our first response. He is our first answer in all things. And then he allows people to be in community with us. He allows us to be married. He allows us to have best friends. He allows us to have people that are close to us. Relationships. So we grow in relationships, right? When things happen, when things happen to us or to those we care about, when our family members or our friends are in the hospital, when we have predicaments that happen and we need those next to us, how often do we cry out to the Lord? Sometimes. Most of the time. A lot of the time? Okay. The answer varies. But God is drawing each and every one of you closer this morning because he wants to be your first answer. And in 1 John chapter 4, it talks about that it's wise to not hate others. And the word hate here is a strong word. So it's the opposite of love. It's the opposite of caring for one another. It is the opposite of the truth because God is love. So the opposite of God would be hate, right? Yes. And so in order to forgive, we've got to acknowledge the things that are in our hearts. And so for the next few minutes, I just wanna to talk to you about your heart. That's it. I wanna to talk to you about the condition of your heart because in order to love God fully, we've got to clean out some of that stuff that's in our heart. Some of that resentment, some of that anger, some of those things that have happened to us, some of those things of people that have happened to us, that have hurt us, that have caused grief and trauma. Because over the last eight weeks, I realized that in order to heal, I have to acknowledge the things that have hurt me. That in order to heal, I have to let God know that something has happened, something changed, whether it was outwardly or inwardly. And so in order to forgive, I have to realize that something actually hurt me that made me need to forgive. And so I wanna set up this pattern for you. God is love, God loves you. I like that, see some participation, I appreciate you. <laughs> God is love and God loves you. That is the foundation of your relationship with God. He loves you beyond the words that you could possibly think or say. He loves you beyond the trespasses that you may commit. He loves you beyond the sins that you may have done or do or will do in the future. That the foundation of your faith is that God loves you. So now add people into that mix. You add your brother and your sister and your neighbor. And God is saying, how do you live in a, a right relationship with me? And then how do you live in a right relationship with each other? And the answer is always going to be to get to know God deeper, always. There are circumstances that may come up. There may be things that happen and God is saying, choose me. I've got you. I want to help you. I want to heal you. I want to deliver you. 
and I want to show you a more excellent way. That's what God's word is for, is to heal, transform, and to renew. So we love God first because he first loved us. And then we add our neighbor and our brothers and our sisters in. And so when we feel hate that comes up, when we feel resentment that comes up, when we have grief, when we feel loss, when we feel sad, when we feel all these emotions, God is asking you to bring that to him. That his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Bring all these things to the throne of God. Because what God does after that is he takes that, he lifts it off of you. Because as you cast your cares on the Lord, and then you allow him to be the head of your life, the Lord of your life. But why is that important, Chaplain Piper? Because in order to forgive, we have to understand what's going on in our hearts, and then we have to believe that God wants to help us to forgive. We have to believe that God wants us to no longer carry those issues inside our hearts. Did you know that the heart is the resting place of the presence of God? that your heart is the resting place of the presence of God. So if there's anything inside of your heart, God cannot rest there. So his desire is to always cleanse you every morning. If you read in Psalms, David is always asking to cleanse my heart, O God. Cleanse me, O Lord. Clean me. Make me right with you so that I may have a right relationship with you. And that's what our relationships are supposed to look like. We come to the Lord humbly. God, this is what is going on inside please heal this heart of mine because I want to love in a way that you love. I want the world to see what you are doing. I want to give glory out of my life to you. And that is the part of why forgiveness is so important for us. God wants you to forgive so that he can forgive you so that the world would receive forgiveness. So they see it in the Bible. They see that there's Christians all over the world. They see that people care about God, but our actions are what the world actually sees. They don't see what you do in your alone time in prayer. They don't see what you do with your, your best friends behind closed doors, but the way you act towards each other is what the world sees. And sometimes the world sees the nastiest part of Christians. Sometimes they see the worst part of what our churches are doing. But guess what? Today we get to decide what we want the world to see about God. And it starts in our hearts. It starts with the way we love our neighbor. It starts with the way that we care and forgive our brothers and our sisters. And so as we start in February, as we think about who am I loving? Who do I want to be hugging? That's my song right there, y'all. That's why that's the title. Um, it's because we don't hug people we don't care about. We just don't. We do not hug people. They don't get that close. They don't get to touch us when they get that close to us strangers don't get to hug and come into my personal space. But who are you loving and who are you allowing to hug you in the moments, the moments where it's the hardest? Do you let God love you and hug you first? And then who else do you let to come in your inner circle? That's how you start to forgive. By first saying, I want people to be in my inner circle. I think I can find some trusted people that I can share my deepest, darkest secrets to. There are people that are trustworthy to hold on to some of the things that God has given me. And so when I look into each and every one of your eyes, I see people that God deeply loves. And he wants the world to see what he's doing inside of you. But your unforgiveness delays that. Your hardening of your heart delays the glory of God. But this morning, God is saying, I want to show you that it's possible, starting today, to show the world who you love. That you get to be the light of the word and the gospel of Jesus Christ. You get to be the light. Wherever you're going back to, whether it's OCS, whether it's Airborne, whether it's Eyebolic, whether you're just coming in from a different school and we didn't even get a chance to say hello, God is saying you get to be the light. And you get to do it in your own unique way. You don't have to do it the way Chaplain Piper does it. You don't have to do it the way Chaplain Moen does it. It's your unique perspective of how God will do it in you. So all of your gifts, all of your talents, all the ways that you are amazing, God wants to use those things. But he's asking you this morning, before we have communion, before we wrap up Airborne Chapel, will you forgive? And that's what this is about this morning your heart. 
God is saying, I want to do miraculous things through you. I want to heal people. I want to love people. I want to restore entire nations. But guess what? I need you to be whole first. And forgiveness starts that process of wholeness. And so what I love about God connecting these texts is that through this week, I haven't talked much because I've been sick. And he has really been Jehovah Rapha to me because I wasn't able to speak like I'm speaking today with power in my voice in the beginning of the week. My, 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 my soldiers know in the back, I, I wasn't even in work for most of the week. But God is so good that he would restore me so that I could speak to you about restoration. I wasn't sure if he was gonna do it in time. That's called doubt. And thank God for, for forgiveness, right? He forgives me for, for doubting. But guess what? You're here at this specific time for a specific reason. And whatever you got out of this word, he wants you to bring it back to those that you care about. Those people that you be loving and you want to be hugging. Whether that's your wife, whether that's your best friend, whether that's your first sergeant, whether that's your commander, whether <laughs> it may not be those two. Whether, whoever that is, God is saying, are, are you the light? Maybe they're having some struggles that you don't even know about. Maybe they're having a bad week that you don't even know about. Maybe their marriages are falling apart and you don't even understand. Maybe they have ailments that they can't show you because they're supposed to be in charge. But will you be the light? Will you show them Christ? Because that's why you're here. You're here to graduate. Don't get me wrong. But you're here to show Christ. And you can do both at the same time. So my encouragement to you is, if there's anything that you need to forgive, if there's anyone that you need to forgive, if that forgiving is you, myself included, self-forgiveness is difficult sometimes because you don't always get it right to yourself, right? So if there's something, someone, you, that you need to forgive, to, this morning is your opportunity. Because when you jump out those planes, when you take that test, when it's time for graduation, when you speak to that good friend of yours that his father's in the hospital, God is going to say, wow, well done. You have loved the way I've asked you to love. Now I can show up for you. Now I can give you what you need for that test. Now I can help you uh, PLF out that, I mean, I, I miss airborne school. Um, you can do the things that God has called you to do. And guess what? You do it with joy which sometimes we lack sometimes in, in a, this area, right, in this environment. You want joy to do the things that God is calling you to do. Not to just do it because you gotta be here, but don't you wanna feel like you wanna do it? Don't you wanna act like you wanna get there? Don't you wanna have something inside of you to get to the end? You want to rejoice through this, and that's what these scriptures are telling us. If we forgive, if we love God with all our heart, and then we love our battle buddies, if we love our neighbor, if we love our brothers and our sisters, we can accomplish so much more that the enemy does not want you to accomplish. So today you get to decide, my brothers and my sisters, you get to decide, am I gonna forgive? Am I gonna allow God to use my life to do extraordinary things, miraculous, above what I could ask or think? Will I be a partaker in this? Will I partner with God? And that's what I had to decide the past eight weeks. And each week looked a little bit different, and each hurdle looked a little bit higher. And I said, okay, I ran track. I jumped over a hurdle once. I can try this again. And God said, okay, at least you got some humor in the, in the pain. <laughs> Come on down. You can do this with me. And so my prayer for each and every one of you is that as you go through this next week, that you have joy knowing that your heart is right with God, that you have peace knowing that you are sharing the good news by your actions, by the way that you care, by the way that you love. They see God because of you showing up in forgiveness. It's more powerful than we could ever ask or understand because God first loved us. And so this is the word that I have for the Lord for you all this morning. And I want to give you the opportunity to just take a moment because communion is the second act after you ask for forgiveness, after God has forgiven you, you get to say, Lord, now I want to partake in this, this beautiful moment of communion. Where Jesus told his disciples to take and eat my body. Or he said, this is, do this as often as you remember me. And then he also said to take the blood 
the power of Jesus Christ's blood and drink it. And as often as you drink it, you do proclaim his victory. That, that this is something we can do on a regular basis. We can do it in community. We can do it by ourselves. So you can speak to your chaplain and they can do communion for you at any time as they are available. That is open to you. And so I wanna open the table this morning for communion. But I want you to just take a few seconds to think about your relationship with God, to ask him to forgive you of whatever I was speaking about today or the things that you did not decide to talk about as I preached. Because as you sat there, you were having a conversation with God and he heard you. And he wants to grant that desire of your heart. He wants to restore whatever has been broken. He wants to renew whatever has been dead. And he wants to resurrect anything that has not yet gotten to the actual maturity that it was supposed to. So take a moment that we need right now, and let's just reflect. And then we'll have communion. going to have two options for you this morning. Let's just move this up a little bit. Thank you, sweetheart. So on this side, we're going to have the wafer 